by Balance Mobility and Aquatic Therapy Center. Welcome back, everybody. Thank you for joining us. I am so happy to introduce our next guest. I am here with Joni Foster McPhee, a speech language pathologist here at Grand Island Mo Balance Mobility Aquatic Therapy Center. That's a lot just to get out. <laughs> we shorten us to BMAC. There you go. Well, that's exactly, that's where we are. And we're talking about speech therapy. Mm -hmm. And um, Joni and I were just talking before we came on air about the different um, speech areas that you work with and it's for different situations for different people so mm -hmm. tell us about how that's all broken down if you have a stroke patient mm -hmm. or someone else well there's there's different areas that we work on because I'll have somebody come in and they'll go I don't know why I'm in speech therapy I can speak just fine uh -huh. well it's like well speech therapy consists of many different areas you have your cognition you have your swallowing you have your um, speech with articulation mm -hmm and it all works together so it's not just necessarily just swallowing it's not necessarily just speech because mm -hmm. whenever somebody says speech therapist the first thing they think about is the kiddos that have the r's and the s's uh -huh. we you know we went to the st the store shoes you went to the, sh the store you know the lateral lists right they think of that when they're thinking of speech therapy or they might have had speech therapy when they're younger uh -huh. but as an adult um we could have different inc different um incidents that happen mm -hmm. to us we could have a stroke we could have a traumatic brain injury. We could have just problems with um, swallowing. We could have mm -hmm. Parkinson's, ML, you know, multiple sclerosis, right. ALS, and they all have different areas that affect their their um, speech in one way or the other, or swallowing or cognition. Okay, so how would you? What is your? Um, what do you do for someone who has a stroke as opposed to someone who has a brain injury? Because there's different mm -hmm. ways to treat. Because mm -hmm. everyone, it's going to be different for each one of those clients, yeah. right? Well, one thing that I found online, it, it was saying that we need to remember that the communication difficulties mm -hmm. um, from somebody that's had a stroke does not does not um, affect their intelligence. Right. It's just having they're just having a difficult time with their thoughts they're having a difficult time with maybe swallowing they mm -hmm. might have a difficult time getting the words out some of the words might come out as gibberish where uh -huh. you just don't understand what they're saying or some of the words might be just plain words but all of a sudden they'll be talking off topic or talking about something else that doesn't even fit into what questions you're asking so so what what would you do with a person in that instance well something like that we just work on therapy on mm -hmm. um like giving them some ideas okay. uh, ideas for like repeating or okay. we give them like a um, something that's functional to what they do like let's say oh. they're um, somebody that what used to be a teacher then we would have mm -hmm. them make up a lesson plan or make up like um, some type I don't want to say a lesson plan but something that they would have been able to do with as students with as students yeah, yeah. Okay. we would just try to into something that mm -hmm. you know what they're interested in you know okay. like if they're in like I have one person right now he's interested in changing oils in the car and stuff like that mm -hmm. um, he has and the person has MS so mm -hmm. what I do is I found some information about steps to change oil or okay. something that's within his interest you know okay what are what are the steps to play a guitar you know what okay. what are the parts that you need to do and stuff like that and if he gets to the point to where oh you know he can't say the words then we would stop and we'd talk about okay let's break down how you say the word because sometimes it's memory and sometimes it's just like you and i were talking forming that sound mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. in getting that vibration mm -hmm. of sounds and vowels to mm -hmm. come out here and not just the the air and the breathy part mm -hmm. of it yeah because we have three areas we have our respiratory mm -hmm. we have our phonatory and we have resonance resonance is going to be things in the mouth you know because okay. some of our sounds come out through our nose we don't feel like it does but but like n m and n and n g you know like mm -hmm. in strong right those yeah. are all sounds that come out of our nose to where if we were to plug our nose and try to say my mama my mama it's going to be mm -hmm. you know it's going to be distorted so um we have to coordinate all three of them if there's an issue in one of the three areas then we're uh -huh. going to have some type of a of a deficit mm -hmm. interesting i'm going to take a quick break i want to come back and ask you about some other situations mm -hmm. with some other clients that you go through so we'll be back right after this stay with us This segment is sponsored by Balance Mobility and Aquatic Therapy Center. 
And welcome back. Again, I'm talking with uh, Joni Foster McPhee. She's a speech language therapist here at the Grand Island Balance Mobility. And we are talking about the different clients that you work with. Now, we just mentioned and previously about some of the stroke patients. Mm -hmm. Tell me about some of the other patients and clients you work with and what you have to retrain mm -hmm. them oh, yeah. to do when it comes to speech. There's quite a bit. Like with Parkinson's, we get quite a few Parkinson's, which is kind of unusual in this area. Mm -hmm. But we have, um, with Parkinson's, a um, lot of lot of the you know they have the tremor, but they also lose mm -hmm. um, the um, some muscle with swallowing and also with their voice voice quality to where their voice will go way down really soft and they'll think this. How and come it goes soft? Because they're not the they don't have the respiration to okay. get that pressure to be able to speak loud. Okay. So there's your respiratory you know phonatory. So you're, you're training that breathing again yes. with that. Yes, client. and that's where we do the you know you know diaphragmatic breathing. That's where mm -hmm. you breathe. I know I'm breathing mouth. with you. <laughs> yeah. Out through your mouth. Yeah. Yeah. And then also adding vocalization to it with the sustained ah uh, okay. in a loud voice. Uh huh. In the brain, when somebody has Parkinson's, sometimes they don't think that they're loud. They'll be talking like this, and they think that they're they're screaming. Okay. So we have to build up that respiratory and get them to be able to produce that loud voice mm -hmm. by doing you know different different things with the ah, uh, you know, mm -hmm. producing a loud voice when I'm talking to somebody. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times we'll have somebody and they'll be working in therapy and then they'll go out the door and they'll be down like this again. So that's why, you know, I have yeah. the little sign up there that says think loud. Uh -huh. And so it's just working on getting that coordination of okay. respiratory, phonatory, and resonance. Mm, interesting. It's really interesting. Um, Another area that we work in and that I've just recently got involved with is cochlear implants. Mm -hmm. There might be an adult that might have just had a cochlear implant put, mm -hmm. um, inserted, or however mm -hmm. you want to say it. And now they're listening through a different way. They have different synapses and different um, ways of, of hearing now. Because you're like hearing it in your head more or less yes. than through your ears. Yes. So, it, so it's going to sound it sounds more hollow? It, it almost sounds like a little bit like robotic, a little bit of um, wah, 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 mm -hmm. kind of like the Charlie Brown. Uh -huh. And so now they have to be able to start getting those nerves and everything to start fibers working again. So we mm -hmm. have to do go all the way back to introducing different sounds. Okay. Like, you know, be able to distinguish a sound between a phone ringing and a refrigerator buzzing. Mm -hmm. Be able to distinguish different sounds. Um, some of the sounds that we make are different frequencies. We have mm -hmm. the higher frequencies, sure. which uh -huh. would be the s, t, uh -huh. which and when you're talking on the phone, a lot of times you have a hard time hearing that. Mm -hmm. And then we have the lower tones, you know, the, you know, the uh, different uh -huh. things like that. Mm -hmm. So we need to introduce these different things with intonation and working on different um, repeating things, being mm -hmm. able to catch all the words because it's not like they're learning to speak all over again because they already know how to speak. A lot sure. of them do. They they used hearing aids or whatever. Mm -hmm. Now it's just being able to um, hear what they can hear with the tone because it's not really hearing it. It's more of the electricity. Sure. It's hard to explain. So how long, like so a person comes in and works with you for however long, you know, mm -hmm. six weeks, six months or whatever, mm -hmm. do they have to keep working on that or is it something once they come in and work with you that it's going to be there a lot of t a lot of times there might be a few that might be able to be discharged and go back and mm -hmm. and get back to that that normalcy mm -hmm. um whatever you want to call it, within right. normal limits but there's uh -huh. a lot of times to where they need to continue doing these exercises and tests that we do here mm -hmm. at home to okay. be able to keep keep it because it's like if you don't use it you lose right, it. Right, right. So that's the same thing with the loud voice when it comes to the Parkinson's. Okay. You have to be able to go home and still practice that loud voice because if you just do it in here and not do it at home you're not going right. to get that carry over. And I'm assuming every client, every patient, it's whatever their situation is, it's different mm -hmm. for however long they're going to be yeah. working with you. It's going yeah. to be. It's going to be yeah. different because you know I might have somebody for just 10 visits opposed to somebody else that I might be for a longer time period like the the person that I had with the cochlear implant mm -hmm. we just we started a, like a month after she or like two weeks after she had her cochlear impact implant mm -hmm. um, activated okay. so um, I've had I had her for like six weeks and then we took a little bit of a break mm -hmm. and then she came back again for another four weeks and then mm -hmm. she was gonna have surgery on the other ear so mm -hmm. she hasn't come back yet but mm -hmm. it's but she was very good at lip reading so mm -hmm. we also have to cover that up so sure. she's hearing instead of lip reading. You're tough. 
it's, it's important to know that they need to go to their doctor and mm -hmm. see their doctor before they, you know, to get a prescription to be able to come in and see us because sure. um, somebody to walk in the door to get services, it would, you know, we need to have a prescription because it yep. is medical need. Sure, And, absolutely. you know, to go through the insurance and everything. But there's just such a vast variety. I mean, here we started yep. off with just talking about strokes and swallowing yes. and articulation, and then we go to something that's auditory rehabilitation. Mm -hmm. So every day it's a different experience. So you have to be on top of your game. <laughs> well, and you are, and I can tell you love what you do. So thank you for helping those people that need your help. Yep, thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it. We'll be right back, friends.